Thank you very much. You know, we operate uh, on this program under the principle that you got to give the people what they want, and the people apparently want Calvin Pickard on After Hours. That much was clear after his uh, emotional plea on network TV last Saturday. I've been, I've been bugging you for a, for a long time. Uh, I need to get on After Hours at some point. Well, we're in Edmonton next week, so there's a chance you could get an invitation to appear on After Hours. Would you be available? I'd be available, but I'm probably like 50th on the list. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, Calvin, it's not as though the 49 ahead of you said no. Yeah. <laughs> and anyway, that's the end of the joke because you belong on this program. Given the good story that you are, who doesn't love a story of perseverance? And you have one, Louis. Yeah, you know, just a, a great performance by you this year. I know it was a tough game tonight, but uh, you look at last night, you go in there, you made some great saves. 12 wins for you uh, in a backup role to Stuart Skinner. You've been uh, fantastic. Uh, just talk about this journey getting here, and um, you know what? You battled to get here. You've always been that kind of a battler in your career. Yeah, I think you saw that last night. I was doing a couple of bad songs here on the clips, but uh, no, it, it's been a lot of fun for sure. Um, you know, all you look for uh, in the game of hockey when you've kind of been a journeyman is another opportunity, and um, I'm kind of at a point in my career where... Um, you know, you just got to go out and be free and, and clear-minded. And, and uh, I got that opportunity earlier in the year. And, and uh, you know, right when I got here, I feel like we turned around um, our season for sure. Um, and, uh, you know, it was only a matter of time before that happened for our team. But, uh, you know, to be able to play, I, I think I'm 20 games in now. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, it's been a lot of fun to play behind such a good team. Well, Calvin, you have been very good for the Oilers after seemingly being destined to finish your career in the minors. Uh, we have a graphic here of, uh, of the countless stops that you've made. And, you know, as we look at these... Uh, what do you think of where you are now? And before, before you answer, I just want to say that Louis pointed out earlier that he's got your beat because he played for four teams in one year. <laughs> yeah, I saw the three in the one year, 18, 19. I'm like, I got a beat. I played for four yeah. one year. Yeah. yeah. It's, but what do you think journey, of where you are isn't now? it, Calvin? It's, uh, it's it, a journey. It's been a phenomenal journey. I wouldn't trade any of it for a second. Um, you know, I was with Lake Erie in Colorado there. I was drafted there. So I was there, I think, six or seven years. You think you're going to be in one spot for your whole career and then, I don't know, what is that, four or five years later? I, mean, I think I'm on my, whatever it is, 15th team. But uh, I wouldn't trade any of it for a second. I've met so many good people along the way. And, and um, you know, it, it's, it's been a ton of fun. And, and that adversity, going through that list of teams and waiting for that opportunity like you talked about, am I going to get that chance? Did it prepare you for when you got this one? For sure. You know, I, I had some sporadic opportunities uh, the last few years in, in Detroit and, and uh you know, Philadelphia, Arizona, um, but I didn't really, you know, get any traction with them, and uh, you don't know when you're going to get your next one, so um, obviously grateful for it, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm in a spot in my career, my 12th year pro, where um, it could have been my last opportunity, and you never know how it's going to go, um, you know, you play a bad game, and then maybe you're just right back in the minors, so um, I just wanted to, you know, go out, like I said earlier, clear-minded. And, and uh, you know, I know I can play at this level. You just got to, you know, believe in it. And, and uh, so far, so good this year. So awesome. back in this 16-17 season, you were the man for Colorado with uh, with 50 appearances. Louis? Yeah, you know, that was your, your first real kick at the can where you stepped in there. And obviously, you know, for you stepping in there, I mean, throw it into the fire because of injuries, but that's how you get an opportunity sometimes. Talk about this. And, you know, I mean, the battler even back then, right? I mean, the, your style, I, I think it's just, it's, it's a unique style because it's a little throwback old school. You say you have to have the foundation in today's game, but every once in a while you just throw it right out the window oh, and go, yeah, I just sure. need to stop the butt. For sure. Um, I think I was telling you this morning, once uh, I lose that compete level is the day I retire. And, and uh, you know, over the years, um, you know, I've ran into a lot of good goalie coaches that have, you know, kind of dialed me down and, and uh, brought some structure into my game, but I can't lose that battle level. It's what makes me good, and it has, you know, my whole career. Question from X Nick. You've battled back after not having a permanent spot in the NHL for years to being the backup for a cup contender, putting up some good numbers. Inevitably, this is inspiring for young goalies. Is there any goalie who inspired you in the same way? That's a good question. Um... In terms of a goalie, I, I don't know if I can put my finger on, on a certain goalie. I've just had so much help along the way. Um, you know, goalie coaches that have been, you know, maybe journeymen and, and uh, 
you know, I, I owe a lot to um, my goalie coach I had in junior. Um, you know, I still work with him. Uh, I still talk to him every single day, and and uh, he's been a huge mentor for me. And and he's kind of dialed me down and, and dialed in my mind. When things aren't good, when things are good, it doesn't really matter. And and um, you know, he's been amazing for me. Before we go any further, we should make clear that you have not been the only one on this journey that we've talked about. Uh, you and Courtney, your wife, were married in June of 19 in Winnipeg, but you've been together since you met in high school, Oak Park in Winnipeg. Uh, most recently, your daughters, Blakely and Riley, have been on the journey with you. So what would you say about uh, Courtney's support during this entire track? Yeah, I don't know where to start. I've put her through the absolute ringer you could say and and uh you know she's the super glue for our family um you know obviously as a pro hockey player you're on the road a lot and um you know a few of those seasons where uh where you're moving around you're getting traded you're getting waived you're getting claimed and and uh you know she has to you know you know be that that rock that uh you know takes care of the family when i'm moving around and, and chasing my dreams so um she's so strong um she's not she's been unbelievable this this whole you know, since I met her, basically. So, um, you know, I owe a lot to her. Her support's been, you know, unmatched. So um, I'm so happy to have her. And, you know, she comes from very solid stock, right? The, Absolutely. The well-known Keats family. The Keats family, yes, back. of course, okay. yes. Um, let's go back a bit. You had four very good years with the Seattle Thunderbirds of the Western League. In fact, I think you still hold the uh, Thunderbirds record for uh, minutes played and, uh, and saves made. This was you heading into the 2010 draft. My name's Colin Pickard, goaltender with the Seattle Thunderbirds. <laughs> right now I'm just trying to take care of business in Seattle and making sure I can be one of those top ranked goalies when it comes down to it. So that doesn't even <laughs> sound like a little more <laughs> grizzled, a little white oh. in the beard, but you know what? The same. Yeah. Time flies what? though. Feels like it's yesterday. Yeah. Feels like yesterday. Colorado ended up taking you in the second round. You were 18 years of age, and the Avs and you had to be thinking you had a long NHL career ahead of you. And so now it's time for the Oprah question. What would the now 31-year-old Calvin Pickard tell his 18-year-old self? Well, I, I, you know, I lot, I learned a lot of good lessons in junior for sure. Um, at that point, I was kind of a hot shot. I was, I was playing a lot as a 16 year old and, and earned some, some success early on. So, um, you know, I learned how to be a good teammate after those things happened, after I got drafted and things like that. I had some good coaches in charge of me and, and, uh, you know, you know, I, I I definitely battled hard back then. I had zero structure as a goalie. I played like I was in the 1940s. Um, I look back at clips like that. I don't even know how I stopped the puck, let alone I have a saves record in the Western League. But um, I love it. No, no, I know, I Compete. know. But it, for sure, for sure. But yeah. it's. Uh, you know, I wouldn't trade those four years. We actually had, we struggled as a team. We didn't have a very good team, but I had the chance to play every single night and, and uh, you know, go through uh, the trenches there. So um, looking back on it, I wouldn't trade anything. All right. Uh, your relationship here with Stuart Skinner. And before Louis gets to the question, let's hear from Skinner. It's been wonderful. Um, I mean, it's, it's amazing to see how well Calvin's been doing. Um, I've been, I'm his number one fan. I'm... Uh, I'm a cheerleader on the bench when uh, when he's in that. He's been incredible. I uh, I just think the best of the guy. So it's lovely to see what he's been what he's been doing this year. And I know you don't know that, but when I'm beside you on the bench when you're backing up, I know you're cheering for Stuart Skinner. He is your biggest cheerleader. When he, when you make a big save, he's pounding the side of the wall. Talk about that relationship. I know you talked about Dustin Schwartz too, bringing you into that circle. Before you do though, you talked about becoming a good teammate. And I know when they called you up from Bakersfield, that was the one thing they said is they needed that ingredient in, in the locker room right now to kind of glue some things together. And I think you've done that. So that work that you put into being a good teammate has paid off this year. But talk about that relationship because it's unique. He's the only guy you can talk to during the game about that position on the bench. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. Thank you. And, and uh, yeah, when I first met Sue last uh, training camp, I'd played against him a couple times um, uh, the year before Bakersfield uh, when I was in Grand Rapids and I knew the goalie Stu but I didn't know the person Stu and I met him in training camp and uh, I was blown away with what kind of character he is and uh, you know his his on ice game t speaks for itself he's an absolute horse um, you know he's structured he's got good battle he's got everything you need um, but in terms of you know a tandem 
yeah, you want to be, you know, encouraging. You want to be able to bounce things off of each other because, yeah, we're kind of on an island. It's just me, him, and, and Shorty. So, um, you know, we're always talking about different things, you know, laughing about things and, and talking about what, what we could do better on certain plays. But uh, it's a day-to-day -day thing. And, and uh, you know, we've had a really good relationship so far. And, and uh, you know, they're great people to be around. Your nickname with the Oilers, Louie. The Governor. You know, and I, Jack Michaels gave you that one. I think I know he heard it around, and he's used it a couple of times. But I kind of jokingly say you talk to everybody. When you're up and down the red line, you know a lot of people in this league. Obviously, the list that you saw the teams you were on before. But uh, what do you think of that nickname? Do you have another one that I mean, it's kind of make, it's a makeshift nickname for sure. But yep. uh, yeah, no, that's uh, you know I've been around the league. Uh, I've played for a while now, I guess, both leagues, and um, the game of hockey has been amazing for me. Uh, you know, the, the amount of good people you meet along the way, um, I wouldn't trade that for anything. And, and uh, so many good relationships, so many people I keep in touch with. And, and uh, I feel like this day and age, there's guys changing teams all the time. So I feel like there's one or two guys that you played with on every team. And, and uh, yeah, I take pride in being a good teammate. And, and uh, you know, I've had a lot of friends along the way. Not to mention the Winnipeg connection. <laughs> we yeah. got to go there, right? Well, you two, yeah. thick we'll as thieves, yeah, those Winnipeg yeah, guys. I, I, think, thieves. See, though. I think the nickname <laughs> speaks to the fact that you, the governor speaks to the fact that you have been the perfect teammate wherever you've played. Uh, let's skip ahead, Calvin, to your brief soccer career. So your family moved from Moncton to Winnipeg when you were seven or eight. You would played soccer in Moncton on the full pitch. You get to Winnipeg and the field, the pitch is divided into thirds and there's a snack break. So at snack break, you go to your parents and you say, snack break, are you kidding me? And that's it, you quit. You yeah, never that, went that back. There ended your soccer career. What does me. that say about you, Calvin? Uh, I don't know, probably competitive, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> didn't have time to look at that, look at that cut. <laughs> look at uh, the dude. I didn't think I was much of a soccer player to begin with, but maybe when I was that age, but uh, yeah, no, I, I don't know what to say about snack break, but it actually sounds not bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it, does it not say that underneath that, that this pleasant personality that there is a fierce competitor? There is a fierce competitor, yeah. Like, like I said earlier, once I lose that fierce competitiveness is the day I retire. Yeah. Okay, Calvin, there is something that I know you wish I wouldn't bring up, and I would go along with that wish, but I have no choice here. Your family insists I bring it up. Let's have a look at the family so you'll know who to blame here. Um, that is your father, Dan, your mother, Kathy, your brother, Chet, who looks like your twin. Uh, <laughs> he, by the way, is also a goaltender and a first-round pick by Nashville back in 08, and your sister, Kelly. So I have no choice here. I'm sorry. i got to do it. Tell us the story of Little pillow look at that you know that's something and you know most kids have like little blankies or little pillows or whatever i'm sure you guys had them you guys are lying if you don't, I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> the thing is i just i just held on to it too long you know i just slept with it for a little bit too long i don't even know if i could say what age i, I think it I think I was almost maybe into pro when I was I'm still sleeping. I'm told it uh, carried over into and the I American think, League. I honestly, I and think... And you lost it in Lake think, Erie or something. Yeah, I lost it somewhere, but I feel like one of my teammates might have just jacked it and got rid of it. <laughs> That's probably the story. You know, I know a little bit about this syndrome, which is to say that I Googled it. Attachment objects provide security, comfort, and nostalgic memories yeah. of a nice childhood. And you obviously yeah. had one, so you should not be embarrassed over That's this. That's fair. That's but fair. But Calvin... Right here, I have a copy of your mother Kathy's little pillow speech that she delivered at your wedding, Green Gates in Winnipeg, in June of 19. And uh, I'm going to do you a favor and not read and it not now. not read it, yeah. Please don't. <laughs> I think she mentioned little pillow about 40 times, so yeah, we'll bear the hatch. Uh, but on the topic of your mother, she just retired, I think, yesterday from a long career in human resources. you want to give a shout-out to Kathy? Yeah, I know you're watching, Mom. Uh... You've been everything for me. Um, you know, you deserve this retirement. I think I know that's a lot of a lot of alone time with Dan now, but uh, I'm so happy for you. You've worked so hard, and and uh, you know I miss you. One more thing, and this takes us back to your uh, discussion of being a teammate. Uh, one of your character traits is you focus on the best in people. Uh, Corey Perry can be a nightmare on the ice for the opposition but is off, obviously seen as a great teammate, and you rate him very highly. He's coming up here on the program next. This is why I'm asking you this. Uh, how highly do you rate him as a teammate? Oh, as high as it gets. He's unbelievable. Uh, I had the chance to play uh, world championships with him in uh, 
think it was 2016 he was the captain uh we won the gold medal and and you know i got a taste of him there for three weeks amazing teammate since he came here he's been you know fitting in seamlessly and he's su such a good guy in the locker room such a good guy off the ice and you see how big of a competitor he is on the ice he's going to help us big time going forward and calvin we've had a lot of personal information about you on this program tonight and i cannot reveal my source except to say it was your sister kelly <laughs> <laughs> and so and that's fair she's and, the most supportive <laughs> sister ever. and so we thank kelly for being the associate yeah. producer of this segment of after hours and uh, thank you for being here as calvin pickard back in the nhl and making the best of it when we come back Corey perry will sit in as we continue from rogers place in edmonton